At the end of this Australia Talks project, what are you hoping to have achieved? I think we, we hope to achieve uh, uh, knowledge and we hope that we'll understand Australians really well and it will help us with our programming and, and content. Uh, you know, we, we think we, most people think they know what everybody else is thinking, but what we're doing is looking for some proof of, what we, of, our, thought, of our thinking. What uh, responses uh, in so far have, I guess, surprised you the most, Ida? I think the one about loneliness, Michael. Um, the, the loneliest group of people in Australia are those aged 18 to 24. And you think, well, really? Why, why is that? And this is Australian Mental Health Week, for instance. And our research tells us that in any, in any year, one in seven children aged from four to 11 will experience a form of mental illness. And so I'm thinking, is there some link between that and the fact that so many young people feel lonely? I find that a very, a very concerning statistic. I think, I think the findings on climate change are really important. I think that anyone, anyone in government who thinks that the Australian people do not believe in climate change is absolutely blinkered in their thinking. We, we as a nation are very concerned about climate change and we are looking for action. I think we, we feel, the majority of us feel that people outside of the capital city in the country get a raw deal. We also feel there needs to be better action on Indigenous injustice. It's, 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 we are concerned about a great many things in our country and I think it's a fascinating insight into what's making us tick and how the future of Australia needs to be shaped. Uh, you, me you mentioned rural Australia, about a lot of people there thinking they get a raw deal. I, I certainly pick that up uh, when I'm out in the bush as well for, for the ABC. And you say this will, uh, the outcomes will help uh, feed into ABC programming choices. What more would you like done, I guess, from, from us as program makers and the ABC more generally to better service uh, rural and regional communities? Well, I think, I think at the end of the day, we've got to look at everything that we've assembled, Michael, and then work out how best to do this. But I was in Bega about two weeks ago, and they're going to run out of water in, uh, in, in about 12 months' time. This is not a new, you know, droughts is not, are not new in Australia. We know, we know they happen. But we, we have a problem with, with saving water. And so I think people in the country would really like some very positive action on water. Not tomorrow, not next year, but today. And, and I think clearly we need to be building more dams and sometimes I think we get a lot of rain in Sydney from time to time and you think really maybe we should have a dam in Sydney I know that sounds ridiculous because there's no there's no land in Sydney but we need to build these dams where it rains so that we can find out a way to supply water to those country towns who need it on a regular basis. One of the questions asked of Australians in uh, the Australia Talk survey is uh, do you reckon political correctness has gone too far in Australia what's your view on that? I agree 100 per cent. I agree 100 per cent that we, we don't talk to each other the way we used to. Even in the workplace, the way men and women used to talk to one another, which was quite fun, I think, doesn't exist today. When I think of some of the conversations I used to have with Sir Frank Packer, for instance, it simply wouldn't happen today. And, and, I, and I think it takes a lot of spontaneity out of the workplace. I, you know, I, I think Australians are essentially good-humoured people and, and we like to josh each other in the workplace and we should be able to do that without, uh, without anyone being offended or sensitive about it. You appear we're, far, we're far too sensitive, uh, I think. Yeah, yeah, and uh, just on that, uh, you appeared as one of the many guests in that fabulous documentary on Mojo, the advertising yeah. guys from the 1980s. And one comment of yours struck me in that documentary. You said it used to be OK to be a larrikin in Australia. Do, do, do you reckon we're too afraid to be larrikins anymore? There are very few larrikins anymore. You know, I mean, Hoax was a larrikin. He was wonderful and he was a great talent. And he still is a great talent. But, but yeah, we, we, we've sort of suppressed that side of that character. And I think we need to bring back the larrikin element of Australia and be very proud of it because it's very unique to us. Our larrikins are pretty special. Now, uh, Ida, you've been in the ABC chair for, for nine months. Arguably, you get more for murder, uh, less time for murder, rather. What, uh, <laughs> what's, uh, two questions. Firstly, what has been the best experience? What have you enjoyed most about the ABC so far? Getting to know, getting to know the people who work for us, you know, visiting the interstate offices and uh, I haven't got to all of them yet, but I'm, I'm getting there. Uh, meeting people, talking to people outside of, us, outside of the capitals about how they feel about their ABC. I'm, I'm, I'm constantly surprised and, and, and heartened by the number of Australians who simply talk to me about the ABC. You know, they say, look after the ABC, love. It's very important. And I say, I'll do my best, I'll do my best. And that's what I will do. 
And the second question, and, and be honest as you can, what annoys you the most about the ABC? I really resent. Um, I really resent the constant harping of some of our critics. I know we're not perfect. No media organisation is perfect, and I've worked. I've worked for enough of them to know their faults as well. And I, sometimes I think, boy, you'd all be lost if you didn't have us to fill your pages. Give us all a break. You know, we're not perfect, but we do try very hard. And and I I resent I resent some of the comments about us. I I accept that. You know we can we can occasionally do better, Michael. Okay, we can all do that. But but this constant harping about us, I think I think our critics need to think about what is the role of the national broadcaster. Why it is important to have an independent national broadcaster like the ABC, and why it is very important in a democracy and an uncertain world in which we live today that that a national broadcaster like the ABC continues to flourish and bring news and information to the people of Australia. I hope those critics are listening to us. I'm sure they are. <laughs> uh, you also have talked about, as part of the Australia Talks project, you, you said earlier that this will eventually help us uh, decide uh, programming choices. But you've also talked about, your words, sleeper programs that the ABC puts out that not many Australians know about. How, how better... I mean, uh, can, you, can you cite a few examples, I guess, and how better can we promote that sort of programming? Well, the ones I think, I, I think uh, nursing homes four-year-olds, uh, that, that, that really built by, by word of mouth. And when people discovered it, they absolutely loved it. The recording studio, I think Employable Me. There are a number of programs. Coming from my kind of media background, we're, we're very, we're probably more, I, I'm looking for the word, maybe aggressive in how we do our promotions. And, and I've always been involved in the promotional work of the, of the previous media organisations that I've worked for. I used to manage the master advertising plan at, uh, at Consolidated Press. So I, I'm, really, I'm really interested in promotion. And I was working for the Packers when we did World Series Cricket. And you mentioned Mojo. I was there when they, when they wrote that wonderful song, Come On Aussie, Come On. So I know the power of really positive promotions. And I think that we could emulate our commercial, our commercial rivals and, and take a leaf out of their book and promote a little more aggressively. It's, it's, of course, the budget has something to do with this, Michael. And mm. as everybody knows, we are experiencing budget cuts at the ABC. So good promotions cost money. But I, th but I think it is an area where we can blow our trumpet a little more loudly than we have been.